As we all know, Matt Powell has a giant inflatable banana in his backyard, which he calls Dr. Peel. Now, apologies if you've tuned in today to catch the second half of Jeffrey, Son of Liberty's video regarding Tartaria from last month. Unfortunately, the second half of his video had even less in than his first, with absolutely nothing of any sense whatsoever. So instead, after seeing Matt Powell pop up on my feed, I thought I'd have another look at him. And what I've found is that since Kent Hovind, the brilliant Wacken atheist Kent Hovind, uh, has been sent to prison for assaulting his wife, Matt Powell is now his new PA. So, realising I've neglected Matt Powell for a bit, I descended onto his channel and found a video about Noah's Flood. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Foil Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick thank you to the sponsors of today's video, CuriosityStream. Now, CuriosityStream is smart TV for your smart TV. They're the Netflix for nerds, the Hulu for history buffs, and the Disney Plus for the scientist in all of us, with award-winning exclusives and originals. CuriosityStream has thousands of streaming documentaries and non-fiction TV shows on topics such as history, nature, science, food, travel and more. Featuring 35 collections of curated programs hand-picked by their experts for streaming on any device, for viewing anytime, anywhere. I've recently been watching Becoming Martian, which looks at what our species needs to do in order to visit and finally colonise Mars. It is absolutely fascinating. Click on the link in the description and use my code SIMANDAN to sign up for just $14.99 for the entire year. Right, back to today's video where Matt Powell is going to give us three proofs that Noah's Flood actually happened. Now, hold on people, this one gets choppy. Hey guys, this is Matt Powell. So now and then, an atheist will respond to my videos and will try to critique my opinions on like the flood of Noah or the certain facts that I bring forth and the interpretations that I apply to them and they will come up with lame excuses for why they think and why they believe that the flood of Noah never happened. What, you mean like claiming that you couldn't fit every single species of animal on Earth into an ark? Or what about the fact that all of the marsupials, animals with pouches, decided that when they left the ark, they would all go to either Australia or South America? Every single one. Why nowhere else? Do you mean excuses like that? So I wanted to go ahead and give the top three evidences geologically of Noah's flood. Geologically? Okay, interesting. Before we start, let's just familiarize ourselves with when this flood from, of Noah's was supposed to happen. Ah, around 3,500 years ago. Right, got it. The first one is just mountains. You can look at mountain ranges and see that they were formed catastrophically and very quickly through rapid plate tectonic shifts. Rapid plate tectonic shifts. Now, what does a worldwide flood have to do with that. Now, if you notice the rock layers on these pictures, they are bent rock. Now, you cannot bend hard rock. And so what that means is that when these mountains were forming, that they were soft and moist, and this is sediment that was being laid down, and plate tectonics pushed it up into place, and then it solidified in that position. Okay, first off, that's not how mountains were formed. And secondly, even if they were, that still doesn't explain the rapid tectonic activity. And finally, of course, not every single mountain on Earth looks like that. And so we see mountain ranges all over the United States and all over the world, in fact, of complete bent rock that shows that they formed very rapidly. No, it shows that they were warped and buckled by tectonic plates smashing into each other over the course of millions of years. Now, if evolution were true, and according to the evolutionist perspective, these mountains slowly formed through plate tectonics, well, I'm sorry, the rocks simply would have crumbled, they would have broken, they would not have bent. Who are you to say that they would have done that? You apply very small time periods to everything you talk about, Matt. You cannot conceive that things can happen over an extremely long time very gradually. Another reason that we know that the flood of Noah is a fact is because if you look at coal seams across the world sandwiched between the layers of sediment, you'll actually find that they contain identical amounts of carbon-14 inside of each one. 
Now, carbon-14 only lasts 50,000 years. Where did you get that from? Now, it's got a half-life of 5,700 years, and that's actually a relatively short half-life, and it's why we have problems with carbon-14 in terms of dating something that's older than around 50 or 60,000 years. So you would expect if a layer formed slowly and another layer formed slowly over millions of years, that you would actually find no carbon-14 in the bottom layers and less and less as you move up. But in the catastrophic uh, plate tectonic flood model, you find, uh, and you would predict, to find identical amounts of C14 in all of the coal seams sandwiched between the layers. And sure enough, that's what we find. Now, after doing some digging on this one, I found a statement from a grad student who was at the university where these coal seams were experimented on. Many of the samples of coals that were tested were not only contaminated, but were also experiencing huge amounts of oxidation. Now, of course, this had bad effects on the results of the carbon-14 analysis. It's identical amounts, which means that all of that is the same vegetation being laid down in one event. When the Earth was experiencing plate tectonic movements, and the continents were moving, and the fountains of the deep broke open, as the Bible says, what do you mean, when? It's all still moving now, buddy. We would predict that certain of the crust of the Earth would actually be subducted into the mantle and would cause catastrophic plate tectonic shifts. But those rocks, those slabs of cold rock, we would predict would still be in the hot mantle of the Earth. Interestingly enough, NASA had done scans on the Earth and found that there are humongous slabs of cold rock that have sunk down into the earth. And what does this prove exactly? And so you have gigantic slabs of cold rock that go 400 or even 500 miles down into the mantle towards the core. And so keep in mind, it's very hot there. Well, why do we find gigantic cold slabs of rock that have not heated up over the evolutionary time scale of millions of years and become uniform with the temperature in the earth's mantle? Well. Okay, this is a thing, but I wonder what Matt is going to attribute it to. The fact is that 4,500 years ago approximately, there was a flood where the fountains of the deep were broken open and a process known as subduction happened where the crust of the earth went down into the mantle and created mountains and earthquakes and catastrophic plate tectonics. 3,500 years ago, you think mountains can form in 3,500 years? Here is a picture of the Himalayas today. And here is what the Himalayas looked like 3,500 years ago. And we would predict that those cold slabs of rock would still be there today. That can only be explained by Noah's flood and by what the Bible says when it told us that the fountains of the deep were broken open. No, that's not the only explanation, as you say. In actual fact, because it's oceanic crust that is subducting, then it obviously is going to be cooler than the surrounding mantle. And that coolness is relative. Compared to your oven at home, it's still a furnace. And it also depends, of course, on the speed and the age of the rock that is doing the subducting. This is an extremely complex and thorough science. You can't just take one part of it and attribute that to the flood. So these are undeniable pieces of evidence. People can deny certain things but there are certain things that are undeniable. Yes, your personal incredulity on the age of the Earth. People can attack certain positions, but I'm sorry, if you're an evolutionist, your position is indefensible. Oh, Matt. Matt, Matt, Matt. As I've said multiple, multiple times, evolution doesn't need defending. The evidence is all out there. What we see in the past is catastrophic events actually creating what we see today. These mountains that were formed by bent rock layers, yeah, that had to have taken place all in one event. You have identical amounts of C14 inside of coal seams all throughout the world. That means that that's the same vegetation all being laid down in one event. This is undeniable evidence. Only those who deny the facts will deny this evidence. And those who seek the truth will grab onto these pieces of evidence and use them to defend their faith. And that right there, Matt, is the word that ruins your argument. Faith. You have faith that the flood happened. We have evidence to suggest otherwise. God bless, guys. Okay, I will. 
Ah, a short video from Matt explaining why he thinks evolution is fake and creation is true. I find it interesting that evolutionists will go on and on about how they want to save species and they open up animal shelters to save certain species when according to evolution, species should be getting created all the time. New kinds of animals should be popping up, new families through natural selection. Well, we don't see that at all. No, no, that's not how it works. You aren't going to see a new species pop up overnight. However, we are discovering new species all the time. In fact, we see animals going extinct. So what that proves is that if we go back far enough in time, back to the Garden of Eden, there were more kinds of animals back then than there are now. According to evolution, there's new kinds popping up all the time, new families of animals. New families? Absolutely not. Families are things like felines and canines. We aren't gonna see a new family evolve in a week. But according to the creation model, we are constantly losing animals. Animal kinds are constantly going extinct. And so whenever an evolutionist tries to open up an animal shelter and shelter a endangered species, as they call it, they're just proving that there were species in the past that are getting wiped out now that we'll never have again. Evolution will never invent these new species through natural selection. Invent? Yeah, he doesn't understand evolution. Evolution is impossible to defend, honestly. You have to lie. You have to make believe to believe in evolution. Says the guy who's happy to tell people that every single species on Earth at the time all fit into a boat smaller than the Titanic. You ask an evolutionist or an atheist, what is the meaning of life? Just ask them that. And they'll respond back with, well, my meaning of my life is whatever I make up. Now that's a slight generalization. I'm sure many atheists have many reasons for life. Some will say there is none. Some will say there is no meaning in life at all. Personally, I would like to try and leave the world a better place than I found it. To enjoy everything that life brings, to ruminate on how damn lucky you are to be here in the first place, and to make that luck count. What they're admitting is that they're making up or make believing a purpose for life. They don't think there actually is any purpose. And so they say, well, I'll just make up purpose. That's make believe, folks. I'm sorry, who are you to tell someone what they perceive their life to be? I don't agree with any of your worldviews, but I will absolutely defend your right to think them. It really, really is utter arrogance from Matt here. Very disappointing. These people are make believers. No thanks, I've had enough of Matt Powell today. We'll leave him there. I'm sure he's got to go and attend to Dr. Peel anyway, bless them. That's it for today's Tim for Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. We're all done and dusted. If you enjoyed it, then please, please do consider subscribing. There's a whole host of other videos on Matt Powell and evolution. Check those out as well. If you liked today's video, then hit the like button as well. Thank you very much. Just enough time to once again thank Curiosity Stream for sponsoring today. Remember, click the link in the description, use my code SimonDan, and you get Curiosity Stream for $14.99 for the entire year. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great week, and I'll see you all on Friday for the return of the numbers guy, Mr. Marty Leeds. See you then.